And it's on days like this here on the Sunday edition that I have had a day to only work a little bit on news and geopolitical developments and the state of our world and have had a little bit of time to spend some moments with the family and reflect that I think we do probably even a better radio broadcast than on average I do weekdays, uh, noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. Over the years, obviously, uh, I'm 40 years old now, I've had a lot of family come and go, friends and family die, seen family die in the hospital, been there holding friends and family's hands when they die, and it never makes it easier. And when I open the phones up later, I don't, I don't want people to call in with sympathy because people are going through this stuff all over. Uh, one of our crew members' grandfather just had a heart attack and is in bad, bad shape. We need to pray for him. But my uncle, who I'm so close to and who, who out of anybody in the family knew more about the New World Order and everything else because he was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam and then worked and did things in Central America and other places, uh, he is uh, in really bad shape from this mystery illness which they've tested him. They're not saying it's flu. They can't find out what it is in his lungs. Will you guys print me that Reuters article uh, that I mentioned on Friday? I forgot to get that where it talks about a superbug infects half of chicken and how if you get this stuff, it basically kills you. And, I, and I'm not saying that's what it is, even though that's a microplasm, you know, microscopic bacteria. It's, it's, it's a microscopic bacteria compared to a regular bacteria. Uh, but that's what they think it is. And I knew the media, because it's killing people all over the U.S. I know quite a few people that have died from it. And so do my crew. New Jersey, Texas, California, you name it. And, of course, there's finally news articles a month into this. We're calling it a mystery illness three weeks ago. Been going on for a month that I've known about it. Killed my cousin, my uncle's son. He took care of him. That's what he, where he got it. They didn't know it killed him either. And now they're reporting it in the Houston News and other things as a mystery illness. And then I said, watch, they're going to call it the flu because they've done this before where they say this person died of the flu, that person died of the flu. And I'm not saying the flu can't kill you, but a lot of times they will hype it up and it turns out it's something else. And they'll say, oh, child that died, died of complications from surgery, not from flu. And sure enough, they're calling this the flu, but then when you actually call the hospitals, well, I've done this, trying to find out what this is, they go, no, we think it might have been a flu, but we can't prove that. Well, don't you have a test for the flu virus? Yes, we inconclusive or didn't find it. And the point is, hundreds of thousands die. Conservatively, it's 200,000. It varies, 230, 180-something. Thousand die from flesh-eating bacteria, staph infections, things like that, the different types of bacteria. But it's not a big hyped issue. Flu, they say, kills 35,000 a year, but mainly the infirm folks that already had complications. And that's a big deal still. And I would take the flu vaccine if it ever, if they ever properly guessed which flu it was going to be the next year. I believe in inoculation. I know it's a real science. The problem is, is that these are corrupt companies that have been caught doing all these horrible things and then lie and say, oh, get the flu shot, it'll protect you. When they admit, you can look this up, it's never protected anyone. They've never guessed the right group of strains. And then they've got all the studies. In fact, I didn't do pre-research on this. I've done a ton of research in the past, but refresher research to pull up the actual news articles. But you can type in uh, taking H1N1 vaccine doubles chances of getting regular flu, stuff like that. It lowers your immune system. And that's what we know. So it's just like antibiotics are great, but the overprescription of them has created superbugs. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other members of the fluorine family that are added to Western water supplies are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the people that drink it. So the question is, why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We developed Fluoride Shield to be the highest quality, highest standards because I use it every day and my family uses it every single day.
Let's take a closer look at the ingredients that make up this special proprietary formula. Tamarind has been celebrated for its ability to immobilize toxic fluoride residues, while zeolites have a long history of attracting and holding toxic compounds. Enter fulvic acid, an excellent cleansing agent. Then we added the highest quality shilaji, a rare compound that is collected from the high mountains of the Himalayas. We topped it all off with the powerhouse herb cilantro, that is intended to mobilize fluoride and other dangerous compounds for removal from the body. And the final touch to energize this formula is our proprietary nascent iodine. And as always, consult your physician as well because that is important. And finally, Fluoride Shield, Survival Shield, and all the products at InfoWarsLife.com grew out of my quest to try to find the very best compounds from God's cornucopia to protect myself and my family. And from our research, I believe we are bringing you the best, highest quality products. And you have that commitment from Alex Jones and the entire InfoWars crew. One more Sunday broadcast, and then we'll be into 2014. And this has been an incredible year. We'll obviously be doing broadcasts throughout the weekday show uh, and into next Sunday. And the Monday after that, eight days from now. Uh, talking about 2013, looking ahead into 2014. It's been an amazing year for Global Awakening, about the nature of reality and geopolitical systems. It's also been a year of growing tyranny and growing oppression and growing fraud and uh, basic uh, corruption. Naked corruption parading around in front of everyone. I think that's one reason people are waking up so fast. It's a year that my radio show, to a great extent, has become passe. The White House put a report out this week because they'll, they'll report on what they're doing and what their controllers are doing to try to fool their constituents that they're some type of you know, true liberals uh, when they're actually authoritarians, along with the Republican leadership, a bunch of bloodthirsty, control freak autocrats who want to extinguish every form of individualism because they see it as something that stands against their hegemonic monopoly of control. But the White House came out, big national news, and they, you know, they're reigning in the NSA with their Blue Ribbon Committee. Why, certain corporations have access to the NSA data and are using it against their competition. Told you that's the main thing the NSA does. And they go, well, American interest. <laughs> yeah, the people running our country really care about American interest. And then, oh, they're spying on Israel and other governments. Oh, this is so illegal. No, it's not. If there's going to be spying, the government spies on other countries that could be a threat to this nation. Like Russia, China, Israel, England, everybody else. I love how the media is like the biggest, dirtiest thing is we're spying on Germany. Oh, my. <laughs> Folks, the truth is they put it all in one big echelon Anglo-American pool. And when I say that, they call it the, the globalists call it the Anglo-American Power Alliance. Australia, New Zealand, I'm going from the, going from the Pacific over. Japan, some of the Asian countries. In the Far East, right through to Eastern Europe, a few Middle Eastern countries, Jordan, Israel, right through into Eastern Europe, right into Western Europe. That's partially Anglo-American power access, but they play both sides with the Russian and Chinese power access. Right into the main source of the Anglo-American model, Britannia, Albion, the United Kingdom, Airstrip One, the heart of the New World Order, into England's reconquered Lebensfrau, uh, North America. And it is the main global monopolar empire is the Anglo-American establishment. And they are vying with Russia. They've almost taken down. And then communist China that they built up to deindustrialize and conquer the middle class in the West, they're, they're playing a double dual game using the billion Chinese plus slaves to leverage out the West and bankrupt the system in a so-called free trade deal. It's not free trade with slaves and suicide nets and robots replacing the humans at Foxconn Apple slave complexes.
and they've almost got their program in place. And then they're going to double cross the Chinese, double cross the Ruskies, who, as bad as the Russian government is, they pay people to have kids. They admit eugenics. They admit a homosexual agenda to depopulate and source U.S. and globalist programs. You watch Russian TV, it's like the New World Order power structure is adding cancer viruses to the vaccine. Our scientists have found the proton, zikron, you know, microplasm, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And it's only because the Russians have gone from 200 million to 100 and something million. They're all dying. They're all under chemical and bio attack. They were run by the communists that our banks put in power in 1917, and they admit that all over Russian TV. That's why it looks like Putin's a good guy. He's not a good guy. He's a strong man, but he's actually trying to build up the country under total New World Order attack. And don't worry, Russia's probably going to fall to the New World Order. The New World Order's too scientific, too focused, too wicked. And the communist Chinese have totally bought into the whole deal. I just can't believe it. It's so horrible. I don't even know what to say about this abomination the New World Order's built. The Anglo-American New World Order. And again, it has nothing to do with white people. That's the old name of the alliance. Because the British Empire was known as the Anglo Empire. And then it, an Anglo-Dutch oil interest. And then it merged with the United States in 1922 the establishment of the Globalist Congress, the Council on Foreign Relations, which is the Royal Institute of International Affairs uh, office in uh, Pratt Street, New York. And it's just so frustrating to see our people so dumbed down, so culturally destroyed, so even unaware of what's happening. And to know that we're under systematic economic warfare, because the globalists are waging war against everyone. Every nation state, every individual, they are all exempt from the law, exempt from the rules, diplomatic immunity. And so then everything they pass and push is meant to literally make us destitute in their own white papers as an act of total siege against humanity and the weakening of humanity with their psychological warfare, anti-family, anti-God, anti-liberty, anti-private property weapon systems, which have been so devastatingly effective And their goal is death. Their goal is destruction. Their goal is raw, pure, satanic power. And I don't know how we'll ever face this and deal with it if people don't come to grips historically with this spirit that is in the world that manifests through governments and manifests through corporate combines. Now, my uncle, who is one of the most dear people in my family, I love him as much as I love my mother. He's such a sweet, good, smart person. He is fighting for his life right now. And so many other people are fighting for their lives. Three weeks after we reported on the mystery illness, because we know it's a mystery illness because the doctors can't tell us what it is, even though they send it off to the CDC, they won't tell them. They believe it's a microplasm the best hospitals in Texas, but it's killing people all over the United States. I mean, you'll have eight people admitted in a small hospital and six of them will die. That's on the Houston TV, you name it. 23,000 killed by superbugs in U.S. each year, CDC says, that's a whitewash. Upwards of 200,000 die from infections in the different flesh-eating bacteria and strep and other things that are in the hospitals. So I've got some news on that because Superbug, Reuters reports, bacteria widespread in U.S. chicken. Half of the chicken in the U.S. has it. And if you eat it, a good chance it's going to kill you. And that's what a lot of scientists I've been talking to and doctors believe it is. We're going to tell you about that when we come back. And uh, we've got uh, U.S. sailors assisting with Fukushima cleanup, crippled by cancer. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. 
We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Be with my uncle who's in critical condition and might die from this mystery illness in East Texas. How it's a different type of love and driving to meet someone who you've got to be with, who you want to be with, but you don't want to be with them. You don't want to see them like that on a, on a respirator. Hearing that song, I always think of going to see a lover, driving the distance, building the electricity in the air, instead of driving towards someone who may die. In fact, the doctors statistically think he probably will. They've seen people come back from this point. Not, oh, many times they come back from this point. And I don't talk about my own personal story here to make it about myself, but about the whole human experience of us together. And it hit me today stronger than ever that that's why I have such enmity against the New World Order social engineers. Because they really hate humanity. Their shared experience is a disdain for the general public and a will to dumb them down and to try to rob their destinies, to try to shutter the doors of perception in their minds. And for me, that is the ultimate sin, to want to hurt the innocent, to want to falsely program a mind so that you can rule over a planet of mentally stunted individuals. That is the ultimate sin. So if you have to separate who those of us that love liberty from those that love evil, it really is those that love light and those that love pain and domination and failure and wickedness and betrayal. Those of us that love starlight. Those of us that love the light of the sun, those of us that love the light of a child's eyes, those of us that love the light of a happy chuckle or time well spent with friends, those of us that enjoy and value the fact that we don't betray our people and that we don't betray anyone. We reluctantly crush those that would dominate and enslave us. Like you step on a scorpion you find in your bed. Darkness is just assaulting every form of goodness. Because to the darkness, goodness is ugly and must be pulled down and destroyed. I have a lot of news here today, and I will comment on the whole Duck Dynasty situation, because normally when something's a big mainstream media story, it's a diversion, it's a distraction, or it, 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 it's meant to socially push an agenda. And, of course, that's the case here, but it, it, it's important because it's a major battle over the First Amendment. And it's a battle that we're actually winning, and I want to break that down, but this is not about tolerance for gay people. I want folks out there uh, who are happy uh, in their lives and in those they love and those that they're attracted to. I want you to know that it's not out of some form of guilt or out of some form of uh, being beaten over the head that I say that I don't judge you or dislike you. It's important for you to know that, quite frankly, I'm not thinking about you. Quite frankly, I don't care what you do in your own life. I'm an individual, I'm a libertarian, but I do not want to be conquered by your culture, which is a socialist democratic party 
anti-family, anti-man, anti-woman, control freak agenda, and you're just the tip of the spear. Using the goodwill of the general public towards equality and egalitarianism uh, and non-judgmental freedom, you have used our goodwill to push your whole anti-free speech agenda, and people are sick of it, and it's blown up in your face. And I will talk about that later. But I even have more important news. That's important. But even more important news I must cover first. But it is the assault on the youth of this country and, and, and pushing the sexualization of children. I don't care heterosexual, homosexual, it's pedophilia. And I've had enough of it. And I've had enough of the, you're a racist if you don't agree with Obamacare and the giant screw job that that is. And you're a conspiracy theorist if you're informed, and then that's just some throwaway term that ignorant people use to not listen to what you have to say. I'm tired of it. This country and this world is in deep trouble. And if you fundamentally as an individual out there don't realize that, you have no connection to reality, no street smarts, no common sense, no nothing. Because this stuff's all staring us in the face now. It's not hiding. It's looking at you eye to eye. And I want to talk again to talk show host, liberal, conservative, libertarian. I don't care who you are. And I've seen some response in a good direction this way in private communiques and things like that. That's good. I don't care who you are, whether you're Rachel Maddow or whether you're a local radio host or who you are out there, whether you're Rush Limbaugh or Glenn Beck. I don't care who you are. I've never been an infighter against humanity. I've never been somebody that snipes at anyone that I believe is, has a stance of liberty, even if I disagree with their perspective. But this is the time for humans to come together who want to have any type of due process or future. Because when we give in to corruption, the sky's the limit, and we have fallen into a bottomless pit, and things are degrading and, 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 and degenerating and, and, and becoming critical right now. And we're going to pass the point of no return towards dominoes falling across the board that are not going to be pretty economically, culturally, for sovereignty, you name it. There is such an arrogant assault by the corrupt against everything good that the corrupt are even destroying the very foundational underpinnings of the prosperous structure that has allowed the corrupt to become so wealthy, skimming off the top. And the corrupt always do this. They always bring down the whole, the whole structure. But I say to all of us who aren't corrupt and who don't have an instinct to hate goodness, we have to rally behind everything good now. And I know sin is alluring. I know corruption is alluring. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, I, I understand this stuff up one side and down the other. I would love to use all the rings of Mordor, to use that analogy, all the tricks of evil to be successful against evil. But evil used against evil only begets more evil. Tyranny only produces more tyranny. But I look into my cultural and spiritual and historical palantir, my crystal ball, and I can tell you, you shouldn't need a crystal ball to see what we're in, not what's coming. I've got medical news straight ahead. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <laughs> My judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Different strokes for different folks. Takes all kinds to make the world go round. All I know is a frontal assault on tyranny, telling it like it is, not mincing words. I'm sure some of you out there have got better ideas. That's why you need to take action against corruption wherever you find it. All right, I haven't gotten into any news yet, 33 minutes into broadcast. I've mentioned some of it. I want to cover a lot of it right now. And first, we've got big medical news, then huge Obamacare news. You've got a day and a half to sign up for it, or you're going to be fined thousands of dollars. <laughs> of course, almost no one can sign up for it. And that's how it was written as a giant screw job. So we're going to be explaining uh, that and breaking it down as well. Also, uh, the Kyoto News, uh, the uh, Times of, uh, I mean, all the big papers over there are reporting massive radiation increases. And they're reporting on U.S. personnel that helped with the cleanup. 
uh, valiantly uh, dying at record levels of cancer. But that's only in the Japanese news. We're going to be breaking that down. Uh, so when there's a real crisis, the establishment is not going to tell you about it. And and that said, I want to say something about my uncle who, who's, who's fighting for his life right now uh, in a um, Tyler, uh, East Texas, a nice hospital, good people there. <sighs> William Hammond was a highly decorated and is a highly decorated uh, Vietnam helicopter pilot uh, in special forces operations. He never told me about that. Me and my cousin, we were about 12. He's the same age as I, Buckley Hammond. Uh, dug through uh, when he was gone to work one day when I was down in San Antonio. Um, one day went dug through his army trunk and it was all the citations and shot down six times delivering special forces and just all this incredible stuff. We sat there all day just reading this, all the, all the just amazing stuff and probably a lot of it classified. But uh, the point was is that it had the citations and, and the letters and the medals and the missions into countries you know, around Vietnam and then he went and did work um, in Central America and so many other things. Uh, and he was the guy that when I was about 14, 15, I already read all these history books. and had family that were John Bircher's, but it was like background. He was the guy when Rush Limbaugh was first on the air when I was about 14, 15 years old. I'm only 40. I think Limbaugh's been on that long. He was on the air when I was 15. I was like, I love Rush Limbaugh. He's the best. And I'm a conservative and libertarian. And he looked at me and he said, listen, it's a lot more than that. There's a global empire. It's a world government. The CIA works for foreign banks. Uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you about it all, but just believe me, son. And he said, you know, read these books and gave me materials. And he's the guy, more than anybody, more than even my dad, who was a really smart guy and knows about how the world really works, who, who, who uh, I probably wouldn't be on the air today if it wasn't for William Hammond. And I just dread going, because I hear it's bad, him on that respirator, going and seeing him um, in East Texas tonight or tomorrow. I just, I probably should go tonight. I just do not want to go. And I just hope he lives. Uh, they, uh, the point is, is that for so many other people, Rob Dews, one of his best friends, 34 years old, our news director, he's only 39, his, uh, one of his best friends in New Jersey died. Uh, and they, they, they did test. They don't know what it is. It's not H1N1. It's not swine flu. Uh, they can't find bacteria. They think it's a microplasm, which is a tiny bacteria. It's like compared to regular bacteria, like a regular bacteria is an elephant. This is like a flea compared to regular bacteria. Like an amoeba is a star destroyer compared to a regular bacteria that's an elephant. And this is like a flea. That's, 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 that, that's basically, or, or an amoeba is the Empire State's building. A regular sized bacteria is, a, is an elephant. And, and this is like a flea. I mean, I mean, that's how small they are. There's KHOU. Three weeks after I started reporting this, uh, they started reporting it in Dallas, Houston, and, and, and mainly East Texas. Mystery illness claims four lives in one hospital. And by the way, since then, it's, it's six lives out of eight at one hospital. This is killing a lot of people. Of course, the big pharma that advertises everywhere jumped on it and said, oh, it's H1N1. Yeah, go get your flu shot. Folks, I have the articles right here. I'm not a troglodyte. I believe in technology. I believe in the science of, 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 of immunization that's been around with smallpox for 500 years. I know immunization works. The government's been caught doing secret testing on basically everybody. They've been caught adding horrible stuff on purpose to vaccines. Bayer got caught adding HIV and hepatitis knowingly to their factor eight for 11 years. They didn't get in trouble. Uh, they, they go to prisons with people that are HIV positive and take their blood on purpose. Bill Clinton was part of that. And ship it. I don't trust it because of how dangerous these companies are. And there's side effects to vaccines that it lowers your immunity. Yeah, it'll help you when you do it sometimes, but then it lowers your immunity to everything else. And I've got studies right here. I'll show TV viewers. I'll give you the name of the studies for radio listeners in a moment. The issue is, is it's like, it's like penicillin discovered in 1944. Secret, you know, secretly discovered uh, by the Allies, and they're not widely used till after that. The problem is, is it's given rise to the superbugs that will kill you, that there's no treatment for, tuberculosis, the list goes on and on. And they've got antiviral drugs that are making the viruses stronger. I'm not saying antibiotics are bad. I'm saying that over-prescribing them and all this now is that they got to give you antibiotics so strong they make your kidneys shut off, which has happened to my uncle. And the doctors believe it's a bacteria.
a microplasm. Then I got to hear in the news, oh, Tyler, people are dying in Tyler. It's H1N1. I talked to the doctors. No, it's some kind of bacteria. So I got to, I mean, I'm talking to them. And I'm making calls to Houston, and they think it's a bacteria. And in the news, they're saying it's, it, it, flu doesn't last three weeks, folks. If flu's going to kill you, it kills you in four or five days. This is taking a month to kill some people. Some people, it's killing overnight. And they're saying they believe superbugs may kill billions, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I'm saying this is such a humongous issue. Now, let me show you a few headlines that deal with this. Again, my cousin... Three and a half weeks ago, gets a fever one night, is dead in the morning. My uncle's taking care of him, goes over to take, because he lives in the you know, same area. My cousin, Peter Hammond, dead in the morning. Dead. My uncle gets sick from it three days later. Fighting it for three plus weeks. Week and a half ago, couldn't breathe, already been to the hospital. They discharged him. No, you know, he's, you don't need to be at the hospital. Goes back, can't breathe, on a ventilator, fighting for his life, losing circulation in his legs. Brain waves you know, are there, but going down. This is serious. And, and how can you tell it's a real plague, folks? Historically, I've researched this. You can look it up. When it's real, when it's really killing people, 200 plus thousand, they estimate in the CDC, die from, quote, infectious complications. They only list 20-something thousand as superbugs, but it's well over that. Some of the numbers we've got are more than a million actually dying. It's something like three million all total, bad drug interactions, cutting off the wrong leg. You know the, you know the horror stories. The sick buildings in there with the, with the super resistant bacteria. Number one thing is if you're going to go to a hospital, go to a brand new one, folks, because the old ones, no matter how good the doctors are, they've got stuff in there that's basically immortal cell lines. And we don't know what that is. There are cells and bacteria, but also animal cells, that cannot be killed except by fire. Just search immortal cell line. They first discovered it back in the 40s with cancers that, that it kill the people that take them, but you can put the cancer in a Petri dish, it's alive 10 years later. It's like zombie cells. And that's basically what antibiotics are helping accelerate. And I've got a story right here. Superbug bacteria, widespread in U.S. chicken, Reuters. And it says half the chicken, 49.7%, carried a bacterium that is basically impossible to kill with any known antibiotic. And I've been talking to scientists epidemiologists, you name it, in the last month. You heard us first here, almost a month ago, say there's a mystery illness because it's killing my family, my kin, and other people. And, the, and I'm looking at the reports. My dad's been to the hospitals, and he's a physician. And they don't know what it is. They think it's a microplasm. And they believe it's connected to the over-antibiotics use in these infested, uh, mainly chickens, in these giant mass production concentration camps where they cut their beaks off and have them covered in mites and these hell holes force feeding them i mean this stuff's all going to blow back on us folks that's all i can tell you and i haven't got i'm going to finish this up when we come back with the flu news symbols are powerful and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of america they've turned them into their own symbols well we are restoring the idea of the true republic not the counterfeit globalist empire by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit MadeIn1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. The sands of time for all of us are running low. This is William Shakespeare wrote, out, out, brief candle. This consciousness, this, this being alive, being able to just see all the wonderment around us. Meanwhile, the globalists dominate our reality and make us look at 
all these Hollywood people and all these music people and Britney Spears and Kanye West and all of it. It's a fraud. It's a joke. The NFL, all of it in the final equation is nothing compared to God's creation around us. Finishing up, the point is, is that in major studies, I'm going to show these to you if you're watching on TV. I'll mention the head headlines for radio listeners. They've never, in 50 years of flu vaccines, guessed what the mutation is the next year. And then there's cancer viruses and mercury and mutated uh, dead bacteria and DNA and RNA. It's just, it's a nightmare. And then they get on the news and go, no side effects from flu shots. And then you actually read the studies. A lot of times the flu shots somehow mutate other flu in your body and then cause super plagues and lower your immunity and just do so many bad things and three flu shots and it doubles your chances of Alzheimer's. That's CBS News on a study a decade ago. Here's some of the headlines right here. Confirmed flu vaccine increases risk of serious pandemic illness. That's from Dr. Mercola. He's posting an ABC News article. If you scroll down, ABC News. New study confirms flu vaccine really does increase your risk of serious pandemic flu illnesses. Doesn't seriously increases it, it doubles it. And that's from Australia, Canada, the United States, government studies. I mean, <laughs> everybody I know that takes the flu shot gets deathly ill from it. My mother used to be a triathlete. They told them all, take it. Uh, she was on the UT master swim team. They said, take it. She got almost died like a decade ago. She doesn't take vaccines now. My uncle got cut. They told him to take a tetanus shot. He swole up, almost killed him. Not the same uncle, and my, my dad's brother. He says, I'll never take another vaccine. Your doctor's not bad, but they are working for a system that's fraudulent. Here it is. Dangerous drug-defying superbug, MRSA, jumps from hospitals to strike communities. What is this Associated Press? This is the type of stuff that we're talking about here, okay? I mean, there's just literally thousands of articles or more on this. Like thousands is an understatement, probably millions of stories and hundreds of thousands of studies. But then I've read this many years. They always do it in major newspapers and on radio and TV the month before school starts because that's a big time for the schools that pay for all the vaccines. The big vaccine makers are lobbying. They say there are zero side effects from the flu shot or any of their vaccines. Don't listen to conspiracy theorists. And then I'll take those articles here on air and I'll put them right next to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and show each vaccine they're talking about. And every one of them says can kill you, can give you Guillain-Barre's, permanent narcolepsy, permanent uh, epilepsy, uh, autoimmune disorders, uh, foaming at the mouth, uh, psychotic breaks. I mean, uh, kill you from the flu, can give you the flu. I mean, they just admit it all. And then I go, hey, you might want to read the actual insert. Shut up, conspiracy theorist. Hey, I got three children. I got a wife. My children have never had one vaccine. They're healthier than all the other children I know. If I, this is like a killer illness. They had this lung thing. We're sick for three weeks. My kids are never sick. They had this mystery illness. Went to the doctor, did swabs. Doctor said, here, here's, here's antibiotics. Here's, here's antiviral. And I said, no. And my wife said, no. Do a swab. Send it off. We'll pay the $500 for a wide spectrum test. Doctor goes, well, actually, we've been doing tests. We don't know what it is. So you're just going to tell us, take this antibiotic? No, we're not going to do it. And they got better. Because it turns out they've had my uncle and everybody else on everything. And then it gets so toxic, that basically kills them. If the virus or bacteria or whatever it is doesn't. They can't find out what it is. They don't know. And just giving you more drugs and more antibiotics makes it worse. They raise turkeys and chickens, ladies and gentlemen. I know Christmas is coming up. I don't want to freak you out. But better buy a free range, ladies and gentlemen. And it costs a few bucks more, but it's worth it. Let me tell you why. I've worked in agriculture. I've got a family that's got a big ranch, cows, you name it. I've worked for a large animal vet for multiple years, and I've been to these facilities where the vet has to sign off on them. You're talking a million chickens in one building with mites crawling all over them, ladies and gentlemen, and giving them so many drugs, the chickens have had their beaks cut off so they don't kill themselves. Because the bird will kill itself living in a hell. You'd kill yourself too. They will peck at their bodies till they die. They cut their beaks off. These are giant blobs held in cages inside of their body, literally being force-fed food. 
and given and, and there's drugs in the food and the bacteria in them are becoming and the viruses are becoming so strong in these living tortured petri dishes and then we're eating the literal tortured animal with all its tortured hormones and things as his body fights back and all of its endorphins and all of its pain and everything it's been through we then eat this and we wonder why our girls going to puberty first it was 15 then 12 then 10 there are girls having babies at age seven there are girls going into puberty at age three does the doctor say don't eat gmo don't eat don't eat hormone fed chicken or whatever chickens are the worst that's where they really really hit them hard no no they go oh we, we're going to put your three-year-old on hormones so your three-year-old doesn't have a menstrual period you, you don't believe me just search engine three-year-olds are now having menstrual periods seven-year-olds are having babies We are cursed by the evil of these corporations. And some of the people on the real left criticize all this, and they should. Meanwhile, we're talking about Duck Dynasty and a preacher, a, pro, a lay preacher, rich guy that came up with duck calls, who they gave a show to make fun of conservatives. It became so popular with conservatives and Christians. It's the number one show in the history of cable. And they kick him off. Now, there's the Daily Mail headline, girls starting their puberty at three. See, I'm not making this up. The point is, I think they had a girl in Mexico got pregnant at five. The point is, seven, they're having babies. And then Esquire, or was it GQ, goes and interviews him. What do you think he's going to say? It's his culture. He's not going to endorse homosexuality. And so then they go, oh, he's off the air. And then Cracker Barrel removes their items and until there was a backlash and Walmart sold out of their items. They know what's going on. The point is, is that it's about domination. It's about being conquered by this system. Because if they can sell you on the false civil right of we got to teach five-year-olds how to have anal sex as they do in public schools and seven-year-olds how to masturbate or we're not liberal, it's really pedophilia. If they can get away with that and taking crosses down and nativity scenes and Christmas trees down, folks, they can get away with anything. It's, it, it, it's, it's an agenda of total social control. And they're using gay people, ladies and gentlemen, who I have nothing against. I don't judge anybody. Let me tell you, that is one of the least of the things we got going on in this society. The point is they're pushing that agenda because they, they've got the NSA spying on us and the foreign banks debasing the dollar and all the corruption and the deindustrialization. They, the government wants to be able to have something to have us fight over because the Republican and Democratic leadership is totally destroying this country at the top and trying to destroy the Libertarian Tea Party that's trying to stop it. You'll know who the good guys are. Look at who's being attacked. So they want to have some football issue, some phony right of, oh, the right-wingers don't want to pay for sex changes of, of, of serial killers. Literally. Well, this serial killer killed 15 people, and he wants to be a woman, and the surgery's $50,000, and racist homophobes don't want to pay for it. We got superbugs breeding. We've got Russia threatening to nuke Europe and the U.S. because we're moving missiles in against them. We've got our government funding Al-Qaeda to attack sovereign nations and turning Egypt over to radicals. And we've got all these serious things going on. And we're talking, uh, let me tell you, there's almost nowhere in this country that gay people are being suppressed or attacked. And we all know that. This is all about a phony thing to get us all debating whether some hillbilly, some country bumpkin can say, I like women. I don't know why you like guys. And we got Charlie Daniels to Piers Morgan. You wouldn't last five minutes in the Duck Dynasty swamps. <laughs> We're going to cover some of that coming up. Man, I tell you. Just the basic human culture is being overwritten by a plastic, toxic, anti-human, globalist, control-freak agenda. And I can put up with almost any sin if it's not a sin against innocence. And if it's not a sin against the natural order of things. It's one thing for people to do stuff that's their own deal. But when they try to, like, make you adopt it, that really makes me angry. It really, 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 really makes me angry. And so this is a short little segment. When we come back, I'm going to give the number out. Not yet, but I'm going to give the number out. 
so that we can hear from people on Obamacare and have you been able to sign up and are you ready to be fined because you couldn't sign up because it's so diabolical the average person couldn't admit it to themselves but we told you before it went through that it was designed to raise the prices cut the quality of care and then not let you even sign up or get it so that you get penalized but so they have your address when you try to sign up to come and grab your bank account which started a couple weeks ago so that is coming up on the other side thank you brought me another article uh, of this uh, quick break and then i have finishing up with the duck dynasty situation i saw a mark dice video today that i was going to play but in the interest of time uh you can just go to his youtube site and find that or we'll link it on infowars.com uh, called gay false flag and what it is is a social engineering false flag and we're going to get into that. And I went and pulled up the articles he has in his video, and it's certainly true. And, and you know, I'd forgotten how almost every time, and I'm actually glad this is the case, because I want to believe that the Ku Klux Klan is on a popular organization, that you hear about the Ku Klux Klan uh, with a cross burning in some yard or doing something like that. Almost every time it's been staged. Remember all those black churches getting burned down? You never heard about that again? Turned out it was black groups doing it. And... This is the culture the system's built, and I don't blame people for false flagging. That's what the government and corporations do. They either create the crisis or make one up and then pose as the solution. So we're going to get into gay false flags when we come back. Then the really big news of the radiation situation at Fukushima uh, and more. And give the phone number out to talk about Obozo Care and where all of that is going uh, here today. Also, I just did an hour of the transmission and uh, never even plugged any of the sponsors that we have. Um, that's how we fund our operation, but more importantly, it's how we get the word out. PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, we run it every December. You can get um, 5.3 months free. So instead of $59, it's $39. And astute folks will say, well, that's not fit, uh, five plus months free. No, the year's already discounted by a couple months when you sign up for it any time of the year. You already get a discount signing up for a year. But then when you sign up in December, uh, you get uh, even more months off. So it comes out to, on the full discount, 5.3 months free when you sign up for a year in December at prisonplanet.tv. So there's the actual numbers. It's 54 95 uh, for a year, if you add five ninety five together for twelve months, it's more than fifty four. So when you sign up for a year, it's usually fifty four. When you sign up now, it's thirty nine ninety five. But this doesn't matter. The point is, get the word out, support us, get the first amendment out, hardcore liberty issues out, and you can get eleven memberships. Your username and passcode. Eleven people can sign in simultaneously with that username and passcode. So don't fight the crowds. Don't burn all that gas. Give PrisonPlanet.tv memberships in an e-card or write the username and passcode in a physical card. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.